In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. You probably have heard, maybe me or maybe another person, mention in sermons or in talks, the, the phrase, the fathers of the church, Aba al Kanisi, or maybe someone saying, according to the Holy Fathers, this and that, and so on and so forth. And you may have never thought to dig deep about what this exactly means. You might have come to church on different Sundays, maybe like today, and heard something like, today we commemorate the fathers of the first ecumenical council or any other council, and never exactly knew why we do that or who these fathers are and why they are important to our faith and life in Christ. For example, today we commemorate the fathers of the seventh ecumenical council, Majma' al-Maskun al sabah a council is a meeting of clergy and laity from all over the world to decide on pressing faith matters. This is the council that dealt directly with our belief on the importance of holy icons and its relation to in the incarnation. But that's not my subject today, that's not our subject. All this to say that the Orthodox Church is a patristic church. In the Knesset Orthodox, patristic church. The word patristic means that we are a church related to the Holy Fathers. The word patristic means fathers in Greek. So we pay a great deal of respect and importance to those people considered to be the fathers of the church. Why is that? And who are these fathers anyway? Let us first establish who the fathers are not. Mean mannon al or shu ghalat al an al When we refer to the fathers, we are not referring exclusively to priests. The word father, because we call the priest abuna or father, when we say holy fathers, you might be thinking about only priests. They are not only priests. Some are priests, some are bishops, some are deacons, and many were neither of all that. They were lay people, mothers, fathers, everything. Also, when we say the fathers, we don't mean exclusively males. It's a generic term that the church uses, the fathers of the church, but some were also females. So the fathers and the mothers of the church. Also, when we speak about the fathers of the church, we don't mean only People in the past, in Nuhaydashi, Mara, or Atta, history, legends. As if we cannot have new fathers appear among us. The era of the fathers never ends as long as the Holy Spirit is in the church. God might and He does always give us new people that the church, after their death, calls them. Holy fathers and mothers. Now, who are these fathers of the church? They are people, Orthodox Christians, who throughout the ages lived a holy life, who carried the faith, who defended the faith, and passed it down to us in words, in books, in sermons, in prayers, in songs and in different tools. They are the people who endured hardships and sometimes death to defend the faith that they were given from the fathers and the mothers before them. And then they preserved it and gave it to us in these means that I mentioned. 
The fathers of the church are the manifestation of the life of the Holy Spirit in the church. They are the manifestation that God didn't only speak to certain people and apostles only. Yani Yesu Ijad, Jesus came and he spoke only to exclusively a group of people and then he left and disappeared. That he speaks to us in all ages. These are the people filled with the Holy Spirit, illumined, and they radiate this light through their teaching and life. And just like there is no exclusive place or time for the fathers, yani they can be in any century and in any land or country appear, there is also no exclusive list of the fathers. No one can ask me, Abu Na'tini Layha bil Abe, give me a list of the fathers. There is no exclusive list. But I'm going to mention a few so that you understand who I am referring to. For example, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Irenaeus of Lyon, Saint Justin Martyr, Saint Athanasius of Alexandria, Saint Ephemia, Saint Catherine, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Basil the Great, Saint Macarena, Saint Gregory the Theologian, Saint Gregory of Nyssa, Saint Maximus the Confessor, Saint John of Damascus, Saint Gregory Palamas, Saint Nicholas Cabasilas, and so on and so forth. Now, what did these fathers really teach about? You know, some of them wrote a lot. Some of them gave us books that would probably fill this church. Some of us only gave, gave us maybe a few sermons. And some really didn't write much. But we know the witness from their life and from their teaching. But if we are trying to understand what things they wrote or gave, or gave us, a lot of them wrote commentaries on the scriptures. So Fassarul Injil, they explained the Bible. And not always they, they brought a book and wrote. Many times they were speaking to the people and we have someone that wrote after them. They wrote defense of the faith, defa on al iman and clarified the faith against heresies, hataqat, around teachings. They wrote prayers and songs. All of the prayers that we are hearing right now in the liturgy are written by some of these fathers. This liturgy, for example, is the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, and some elements from it are also attributed to other that we read, for example, before communion or after communion, to other fathers of the church. Sermons, texts on the Christian life. They gave us teachings on Hayatna, on our daily life, family, marriage, Friendship, work, relationships. They gave us teachings on the human being, the human body and the soul, how sin works, how temptation works, what is repentance, so on and so forth. They preserved what they were entrusted with. This pledge that St. Paul speaks about, that we are given the pledge. Just like the priest is given the pledge on the day of his ordination, the body of Christ. And the bishop tells him, preserve it until the day of judgment. We are given the pledge of the faith and we have to preserve it until the day of judgment. The fathers are people that we know have preserved this pledge in their life. And they presented it and made it accessible to their world in a beautiful manner. Now, it is important to know that not every single word uttered by every single father becomes infallible. For the church. There are fathers that the church found that there are a few things that they said that is not consensus doctrine in the church. So not every word every father said is gospel to us, if I can use this word. I was reluctant to use this word for other reasons. But their collective heritage that is accepted by the church is a primary source of our faith. Now, why is it important to be a patristic church? 
without the fathers, we isolate ourselves from Christ. And his first community, and then all the communities, and so on and so forth. And from there, when we do that, it becomes very easy for heresies to enter our, our community, our church. We make Christ say things that he never did say. Christ didn't come once, throw a book on us, and left, and says, each of you read this book and see how you feel about it and how you relate to it. And then God bless you. Christ is a person. And he gave us the Holy Spirit which worked in the early Christian community and from there in all the eras and the centuries up until this community. So their witness and experience is crucial to us and it's inspired by God for us. A church, a church that doesn't give a central status for the fathers and their contribution has two problems. الكنيسة يلي ما عندها مكان للأباء عندها مشكلتين أساسيتين أي كنيسة any church it would be indirectly admitting that Christ does not work in the church or at least not as the same in the same way that he worked when he came and became a human being as if he would be more effective only if he was in the body with us And that cannot be true because he is God. How can we say, you know, Jesus Christ was more efficient in what he can do for us and, and give us and inspire us only when he is here in the body? So that's a problem. Another problem is that a church that is not a patristic church opens up the danger to pride. A patristic approach teaches us humility. Why? Because if we don't trust those before us, their holiness and prayers and insight, what are we? People that we think that we know it all. We think that we know everything and we don't need the holy people before us. So a church that does not give the fathers this status might lead it's be her people to pride and will lead her people to pride because pride is already something difficult we struggle with. So how do we get to know these fathers? I mean, all when we say we need to get to know them. Father Thomas Hoppo, one of the contemporary uh, priests and theologians says something beautiful. He says, you know, sometimes it is difficult for us to read the writings of the fathers of the church since their manner of writing is very different in style from our own. He says, also some of the spiritual and ascetical teachings were put in a monastic setting and we need to transport them into a non-monastic setting because we are not all monks and nuns. He continues saying, nevertheless, it is important to read the writings of the fathers Directly, we should read the writings directly. We should do this slowly, a little at a time, with guidance. So we ask, where should I start? What should I read first? And with careful thought and, and consideration, and without making quick conclusions. Just like the same way we read the Bible, with guidance, with prayer, slowly, with focus and consideration. Finally, and most importantly, remember that we have to strive to be like the fathers. Not necessarily become fathers or mothers, although maybe God calls one of us, he decides, but to emulate their life. And how do we do that? With the following. Five quick points as a final advice. Be rooted in the Bible. Kunu mutajazirin bil kitab al muqaddas Build on and appreciate what you have been given from before you. And then be creative within the tradition. Be creative within the tradition 
to present to the world around you something accessible. Live a righteous life and a holy life. Aishu Hayat Fiya righteousness, burn and love your neighbor. And finally endure difficulties and be strong. This is for me a very serious matter. And I think that we need to all think if we really understand that our faith is a patristic faith, Iman Abai. And I really think that often people have problems with the faith and they ask questions, certain questions, because they don't get this point. Without the fathers, beloved in Christ, we will be isolated. We will be unsupported. We might be prideful and misguided. May the fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council and all the Holy Fathers and mothers of the Church pray for us to be strengthened in our quest to be even if a little like they were. Amen.